I've downloaded dozens of YouTubes that uh, may be of interest to the family, but uh, this one is especially for me. Uh, this is Lois' story about uh, our first meeting and our first date. Uh, it's part of uh, the 2014 collection of her writings, but uh, slightly um, edited for time. Whenever I read it, I'm transported back in time to those two events. I never tire of reading it. Lois was uh, an excellent writer. Also a beautiful person. I've added some uh, photos of uh, us from 65 years ago. Uh, to um, bring back even more memories. Meeting Bill. Uh, it's the northwest side of Chicago and I'm 18 and sitting in the Marlu with my younger sister and her musician boyfriend. Uh, he's going to play the bass fiddle here later as part of a jazz combo. The place is really just a local bar with a few tables and booths on the side. Mary, Normie, and I are talking. None of us has anything much to say. I had just broken up with my old boyfriend, Richie. I'm not uh, too affected by it since this time I'm the one who did the breaking up. What a difference from last year. Almost a year ago, when uh, the same guy told me, in so many words, that it was quits between us. This was after two solid years of going steady. He was tall and blonde. I'm dark and medium-sized. In so many ways, it was uh, like we were made for each other. Or so I thought. Then came the night uh, when he said he needed to see other people and other horrible things that all sounded like words being read from a script. He had never hurt me before, and what he was saying was beyond brutal. I couldn't believe it. He seemed like he was making it all up from some weird play. All I really took in as solid truth was that he wanted out. At 17, that was tragic. Now I'm 18 and I had a good year, boyfriend-wise. A year uh, I'd never have had if Richie had done me the favor of ending it. So we're sitting in the booth and nothing happening for quite a while when in walks this tall, dark-haired, solid-looking guy who's dressed like an older man for some reason. Dark suit, top coat, polished shoes. Whoever he is is heading over towards us. And I see that Normie knows the guy, someone he knew from school, and who plays tenor sax. Assuming that he's uh, welcome, uh, this guy sits uh, down next to me as soon as we're introduced. Bill Larson. Plain name. Seems to know his way around, though. Not too many guys act as uh, self-assured. He seems easy, at home with himself, as if uh, he probably could cope with most things, or could fake it if necessary. Richard would never had the acting self for that. This new guy has a round baby face with faint dimple, dimples and uh, a Cheshire cat smile that seems uh, that keeps lighting up his face as he talks and listens. I noticed that about him, that he listens in a nice way that uh, shows me he doesn't have to be in the limelight all the time. But if he is, he knows how to act. After a while, he takes a, 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 turns to look directly in my face. He looks for a while, 
and he says, Did anyone ever tell you you have beautiful eyes? It's got to be the oldest line in the world, but the way he says it makes it sound sincere. I can't think of anything to say back. But I'm thinking that not only does this guy have the, the take the cake for having to, the nerve to say a thing like that, but there's something off about him to be saying it at all. But yet uh, other pers possibilities come uh, up in my mind too. Doesn't he know people only say that uh, kind of thing in the movies? Does he take me for an idiot? I don't think so. After that, uh, the four of us talk a while, and he's asking me if I have a ride home. I feel like he's rushing me. But I actually could use the ride, so uh, we walk out, and I get into his car. And on the way, he tells me his uh, that, uh, it's his birthday, his 20th. It's hard to believe he's only a year older than I am. He seems so much older and wiser. Where did this person come from? It turns out <clears throat> that he actually grew up in the neighborhood, and we went to the same schools. We agree that uh, it's uh, very odd that we never knew the other existed. But I think that, uh, in a way, it's good because uh, now uh, we're new to one another, and I don't have uh, and don't have any shared memories of ourselves as kids, vulnerable and wet behind the ears. It takes only five minutes for him to drive me home to where I live with my family on Belmont Avenue. Dropping me off at the door, he asks if uh, we can go for a ride the next afternoon. Guys uh, usually don't close in this fast, and I'm, it's making me a little uncomfortable. But I say, okay. One o'clock already, he asks. And, uh, and I'm not even ready when he actually turns up at the stroke of one the next day, which is a rainy Sunday. He looks happy to see me uh, when I met him at the door. One thing Mary knew about Bill is that uh, he had done an army stint in Europe and had been stationed in Austria for some time. Despite his youth, he was only 17 or 18 at the time, yeah, he had been given a, per, given a pretty responsible position uh, with uh, the U.S. military government that had been in charge of running things over there after the war. This explained some of his swagger and confidence to me, along with other things Mary had heard from Normie about, his, about Bill's success with young Austrian women uh, while he was in uniform. Somehow, this uh, didn't seem exactly real to me, though, as if uh, whatever happened in wartime, or even post-wartime places, had rules that didn't apply to us here at home. Driving along, the rain poured steadily on the roof, and the car seemed like a warm little island we share together as we cover the distance to far-off, corny old Elgin. How odd it is to be going to Elgin, where nobody goes on a date, especially with just uh, the two of us. Most guys uh, might manage a double date at first, and we'd uh, all get together and get a sandwich in the neighborhood something that would take little time to, to find out if we could keep a conversation going with one another. This guy seems to invent his own schemes for life. So, we finally get there, and he pulls up to a fairly nice-looking Chinese restaurant right in town, acting uh, like he had been there before. We go into the restaurant, 
and without even conferring, wind up ordering the same thing off the menu. Wonton soup first, pork charmaine after that. Trying not to slurp the soup, I suddenly, uh, I'm suddenly aware of the fact that I don't know this person from Adam, and I feel paralyzed with sudden shyness. He's not like anyone else. It's like he sees this and understands, and I start to like him. To fill uh, my silence, he keeps taking, talking about movies or something, and I listen to his deep, smooth, masculine voice, which sounds like a radio announcer's. Even though I suspect he's p- uh, pitching it down to impress me. After lunch, we drive back towards Chicago, and without a word, he pulls into one of those Forest Preserve parking lots next to a dam on the Fox River and parks the car. He turns on the car radio to CBS Symphony. Unlike the way I would probably feel with most guys, it doesn't occur to me to wonder if he's going to try something in this situation. I can feel his attraction to me, but I know he's not crude enough to ruin things between us by acting too soon. I already know he's in love. As we sit there, the this, this serious music goes over my head, but I can see he's clearly enjoying it. I'm impressed in a way. I've never gone out with a guy who listens to this kind of stuff. My taste runs to Benny Goodman and Johnny Mercer and simple dance music or jazz with a bounce to it. Now with the somber music playing, it's quiet. And the two of us sit together in the silence for an hour or more without so much as touching hands. I usually talk when I'm with most people, but... After a little while, I start getting into the peacefulness of the quiet between us and even start hearing the music with an appreciation of my own. From where we're sitting, we can see the bare branches of huge oak and maple trees against the sky and raindrops falling into the gray river water making elegant, splashing little crowns as they land. Along with this new experience of being quiet with someone, I'm also thinking how really good it is to be with a person who understands not to ask those awful questions you're supposed to ask about someone's life. This means I'm relieved of asking him about his. I want to say it feels like he understands me, and maybe it's true. Or maybe it uh, seems more like he already knows all he needs to know about me, and so do I about him. The important things that have nothing to do with life stories, that could come later, if we ever get together again. I don't question that we will. Something happened today, what I don't know for sure but it feels big. It really was big. It was 63 years big. <laughs>